Hi and welcome to the first of the English videos. This one is So You Want to Know About, number one, podcasts. So it's a short video in English about podcasts, which are becoming more and more available and present in our everyday lives. I don't know if you listen to podcasts regularly, and there are many, many different uh, themes and options of podcasts available now. It's October 2020. So let's begin by looking at the word podcast and the origin of this word pod has lots of different meanings in English. Firstly, a small case or space or in a way a house, I suppose, for small vegetables like peas, so a pea pod, or perhaps uh, seeds, a seed case or a seed pod. Then in a similar way, a small space for humans to live in. For example, an astronaut would live probably in a space pod when going into space. Pod is also used for a group term. A group of dolphins is known as a pod of dolphins. And then finally, the most recent use, an iPod, was devised in the start of the millennium, at the early 2000s, with the new product from Apple, the iPod. Then cast, you could say cast or cast. This is a verb and again, it has lots of different meanings, but it's not a verb we use a lot in English every day. It can mean to look in a direction. So we cast a look, we cast a glance at somebody. Quite often it's a, got a negative connotation, so she cast a dirty look or a disapproving look, like Sophia Loren is casting quite a nasty look at Marilyn Monroe here. Similar to casting a look, which is like throwing, that's another synonym to cast is to throw. We've got the way that light is moving, is cast on a person. So we can see the direction of the light is coming down. And in also a similar way, the person is casting a shadow. So we talk about casting light and casting a shadow, this movement of light. A third use is to cast a vote. And I suppose here we have like the light, a movement, a kind of movement into the voting box. So to cast your vote, to put your vote in the box. So in general, cast has got the idea of throwing, moving and the direction of your look. There's been a development like the movement of the light. Now we've got the movement of sound and the verb to broadcast is used for radio and television. So we talk about the verb to broadcast a TV program or to broadcast a radio program. So podcast is coming from pod in the sense of the iPod and cast in the sense of broadcast. And so this makes the single word podcast, which for the linguistics geeks amongst you is what we call a portmanteau word. Portmanteau words are really a mix. 
just like podcast of two different words coming together to make one new word and it's often a synonym of invention, creativity, needing a word for a new object or something in your lifestyle. So other examples are brunch, the mix between breakfast and lunch, Bollywood, so the mix of Hollywood and the Indian city Bombay, now known as Mumbai, uh, for the famous Indian film industry. Pokemon, which comes from pocket and monster, the Japanese uh, phenomenon that everybody knows about, I think. And one that I'm not really very, very proud of, but Brexit, which comes from exit and Brussels as in the European Union. Another question we may ask is then what's the difference between a podcast and another show on the radio? Uh, radio has been producing many many shows and series of course since the beginning of famous broadcasting institutions such as the BBC which for interest is going to be a hundred years old very soon so the BBC has included shows, series every week for decades. From the 1950s, there are some that are still running up till today. We also know that there are series on TV and I think these perhaps became more and more popular from the 1970s onwards. Um, they're still very popular today but since the late 1990s, the early 2000s, we also have the video on demand format, which means we can go back and watch episodes we've missed, or we can binge watch and listen to everything all together, watch all the episodes. And of course, now there are other services such as Netflix with their own series. I think podcasts are a kind of combination of this tradition. They are broadcast weekly or monthly. So there's the similarity with a series, knowing that there's a new episode, a new instalment arriving soon. And they're also stored in one space. Uh, could be on a website like Spotify and you can find them therefore on demand to listen to whenever you want. So this is podcastinsights.com and here is a list of the top 100 podcasts in the UK at the moment updated on the 11th of October and we've got a whole list here starting with Shag Maridanoid and I'm just scrolling down I know no such thing as a fish I'll explain afterwards that's connected with QI, uh, BBC Comedy, quite a lot of comedians here, Adam Buxton who we'll see later, and Desert Island Discs. This is perhaps technically one of the oldest podcasts existing. More from Radio 4 with, fortunately, with Fee and Jane. Comedy, music, poetry, news, lifestyle, sport. More or less, I use this a lot with uh, lessons, with information on businesses and statistics. Grounded with Louis Theroux, we mention later. Now the Michelle Obama podcast, I've never listened to that, but it's very popular as well. And Happy Place, I just saw there, which is a favorite of mine. 
from fern cotton and so on and so on so really lots of variation in the podcasts available the first podcast i want to mention today is the adam buxton podcast which i only discovered recently this year I've been listening for a few months, but I can see in the archives he's been making podcasts since 2015, uh, and there are also many different categories of guests he's welcomed, different uh, celebrities, actors, comedians, musicians, his old friends, writers, and all those that are difficult to put into a category who are fascinatingly uncategorizable. And all of these interviews are presented in the order that they were broadcast. Many of these people are perhaps more familiar, better known to a British uh, public, but some of them are also international stars and celebrities. Uh, for example, I'm going to look at Ramesh Ranganathan. He's a stand-up comedian of British um, and Sri Lankan origin, I believe. And uh, before we begin just listening to the opening, the Adam Buxton podcasts always have a, a little song at the beginning, and he is uh, famous really for his uh, humorous jingles that he puts in the middle of the interviews to cut up the dialogue. Um, they're always very funny. And uh, he always begins then with uh, an introduction before the interview about the person, why they decided to speak. Perhaps they were already friends, perhaps they got in touch, uh, perhaps it's somebody he's always wanted to contact and speak with and uh, a little bit of information about that person and the the origins really of the interview. Uh, there's always normally a reference as well to him walking his dog, Rose, who was the dog I just included in the video previously, which is nice because you always get a, a familiar format with, uh, with Adam Buxton out walking his dog before the interview begins. So let's hear the beginning. I added one more podcast to the giant podcast bin. Now you have plucked that podcast out and started listening. I took my microphone and found some human folk. Then I recorded all the noises while we spoke. My name is Ad Buxton. I'm a man. I want you to enjoy this. That's the plan. How you doing, podcasts? Adam Buxton here. I hope this finds you as well as possible. I am speaking from a farm track in East Anglia, UK, in the middle of April 2020. I'm out on my lockdown exercise walk with my dog friend Rose. Anyway, listen, let's get into it, shall we? Well, you've just seen the opening of the Adam Buxton podcast, one of my favourites. And uh, the introductory music, which is also a good description of what a podcast is all about, uh, recording people speaking, having a chat. Uh, Adam Buxton is quite funny with the inclusion of different little jingles and bits of music during the podcasts. And then there's the opening line that he always uses to greet everyone. Hey, podcasts. So this is geeky linguistics point number two. It's called Metathesis, and you heard right at the opening of the Adam Buxton podcast, his greeting. He said, hey, podcats. Um, instead of saying, hello, listeners, or hello, podcastees, what do you call somebody who listens to a podcast? Um, he's made a little joke, a little play on words by switching cast, podcast and cats and this switching of the letters and sounds is an example of metathesis. Other examples in the English language 
uh, the verb to ask. Now there are some uh, variants of uh, and speakers of the language that don't pronounce ask, demander. They say to ask. Uh, there's a lot of criticism around this because it's not conventionally socially correct. Um, but it is a way of speaking, it is a, a dialect form of the language, it's a variant of the language and it is accepted in some communities and it has existed for a very long time. Uh, people say ask instead of ask. There are also examples of metathesis between languages. So here we can see the word moustique in French is in English and Spanish mosquito and so the k, q and the t are again switched between these two languages. Fern Cotton for coming oh, on Under the Skin with me, Russell Brand. I was thinking like that if me and you were doing this conversation a while ago, it would have had like quite a few layers of production involved, yeah. possibly agents and stuff. And I suppose one of the advantages of podcasts is that it becomes very uh, free. Yeah, I love that. I, I, I love it, but I struggle with it because I've done radio for so long and it is really a sort of a discipline. You have to learn how the rhythm of it works and the timings and... And also, like you say, all those layers of, you know, there'd be a, pro you know, a producer and then another producer and a, a unit assistant and then some other people floating around. And you know that it has to sort of cohesively work as a team where with a podcast it's essentially just a chat. And I Now, I've chosen this second extract from the Russell Brand podcast, Under the Skin. Uh, Russell Brand is an actor, comedian and activist. And he presents his podcast, Under the Skin. Uh, I think there's a new episode every week. He's uh, got a guest who's another presenter, radio presenter, journalist and podcaster. So we've got one podcaster here interviewing another podcaster, which is perhaps becoming more and more common as well, because more and more actors, presenters, journalists have these podcasts so it's more frequent that they're interviewing each other um, and it's interesting to hear what they say about the difference between their work in radio and their work on podcasts. Uh, we've known each other a very long time obviously and we know a lot uh, about each other and we have a sort of shared history in a sense as well and there's there's a subject that um, I think we can we can both talk about quite well. I'm really interested to hear your angle on it, and that is turning pain into power. Um, because I've sort of watched from afar you you doing this very subtly but successfully, um, and I'm I'm sort of intrigued as to how you do it. So when when do you think you first became aware that you perhaps had had the propensity to to do such a thing um if i'm honest it would be around about the time when we were full steam ahead with smile so uh in my late teens about 18 or 19 years old i was going through quite a lot at home um weirdly you know we were we were both going through a lot in terms of having a full-time job for the first time we were both contracted at the bbc and we were working on multiple shows and we were navigating being young adults as well, you know, uh, having a first real partner um, and we both were buying our first homes at that time. We were teenagers with mortgages and um, that whole process for me was difficult because I was sort of bumping heads quite a lot with my parents. And so um, moving out was something that became an option because I had a career. Um, financially, I was in a position where I could buy a home. But I didn't want to leave my younger siblings, but because I was having such a difficult time, I was able to. And uh... Now, another common feature of podcasts is to keep things informal. And Fern Cotton's podcast, Happy Place, is, as she describes in the Russell Brand interview, really a friendly, warm, engaging chat with people that she knows perhaps very well, 
like in this example, um, Reggie Yates, who she's known really since her teenage years, and people maybe she doesn't know very well at all, but she wants to get them to speak really openly and honestly about their feelings, uh, their mental health, uh, things they find easy and difficult in life. And her real uh, objective in all of her podcasts is, as the title Happy Place suggests, to find the positive things that make us feel better in life. Who must be making so much money right now, don't you think? I don't quite understand why everybody's suddenly like jumped ship from Skype and FaceTime, but do you know who I had my very first ever Skype conversation with? The first time I ever had like a video conversation with anyone. Robbie Williams. I'd never met him, and he just popped up on my computer. It was quite intimidating. You chased UFOs together, didn't you? Yeah. That particular call was he wanted to spend a night in a haunted house and wanted me to facilitate it for him. Tell me the story. Okay. Everyone loves Robbie Williams. And the idea of Robbie Williams chasing ghosts, I think, is irresistible. Okay, I'll leave out the UFO part of it. I'll just tell you the less well-known ghost part. It began with me getting a telephone call from Catelyn Moran. She left a message saying, stay by your phone. Robbie Williams is going to phone. And I thought, that's much too stressful. So I turned off my phone. So that example was from the podcast Grounded, presented by Louis Theroux. He's interviewing a man called John Ronson, who's a writer and, again, TV presenter, but really a um, documentary writer and presenter. Um, as is Louis Theroux, he is also really famous for his investigative journalism and documentaries. Um, this was just another example to show you the fact that most podcasts are audio format, but during the lockdown with the confinement period since March, the technology has allowed us to connect with video to be able to still record each other and also film each other. So there are a question at the beginning that we're using Zoom more and more and it's quite interesting to see the the rise of Zoom instead of using Skype or FaceTime which we already most of us had at our disposition. Um, interestingly as well the, the word grounded is also a little play on words uh, because grounded really means stuck on the ground. So we were in the confinement stuck at home. We were really based on our home soil, on our home ground. It also means uh, grounded when you're a naughty child and your parents ask you to stay at home, uh, stay in your bedroom, not go out, you're punished. So it's also significant that it felt like we were all stuck indoors as if we'd been naughty children and we couldn't go out and have fun. Hi, it's Deborah. I am back and I am now trying to get Sindhu up on Instagram Live. So uh, I am hoping all of those people who just left are coming back. It's the new normal with Deborah Francis White and my very special guest today, Sindhu V. Very exciting. Yes. So um, it should now say that the Guilty Feminist is live. So if you could, uh, Tom, see if Sindhu can see that. You sent your request. Uh, I haven't seen a request, but let's see. Yes, there we go. Okay. Hello, Sindhu V in three, two, one. Here she is, I believe in it. Yay! Sindhu is there. It's very exciting. You can't hear me? I can hear you. You can't hear me. Okay, Sindhu's got headphones in and she can't hear me. Uh, I'm not sure why. She can't hear me at all. Um, oh, I can hear you now. Everything Yay! Great. That's very exciting. So the first question on the new normal. Welcome to the new normal, Sindhu V. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This is um, so new and 
new. It's normal. So new. It's not normal yet. It's not. No. We're trying to make it the new normal, but it isn't. Because I want to be in the same room with you, hugging you. Because I did the last ever Guilty Feminist, not ever, I did the last Guilty Feminist live show with an audience with you, so I feel very bonded to you, and it wasn't that long ago. No, it, it was on, like a million it was, years ago. It was on a Monday, wasn't it? Yeah. And in this final example, I selected a uh, presenter, Deborah Francis White, who's also written uh, an excellent book, who is using uh, Instagram as her medium now for the podcast, not a website like some of the others. And we can also see here some typical language that everybody is using more and more these days because of using Zoom, Teams, Skype and Instagram to connect with people. So some of these podcasts do feature the kind of technical questions that you need to ask. Not only can you hear me, uh, are you up? Means are you visible? Uh, are you connected? And all the kind of testing, testing language that's used to just check that the connections are right before the actual interview begins. Now we've seen some of the more recent uh, examples of podcasts and the presenters connected to them. I'd like to mention, uh, as I said, some of the older radio programs that have uh, really been around for decades. One example that I often recommend listening to is Desert Island Discs. This is the website um, on BBC Radio 4 and in fact the history of the programme is mentioned and it began in 1942. The concept is exactly the same. There was uh, a guest that was interviewed about um, their life and important events that had happened to them and a selection of music of favourite songs that they would take to play, to listen to on a desert island. Now on the home page of the Desert Island Discs website we can see the available uh, interviewees. In total all the available episodes there are 2,279 and we can see that they are now using the term as well podcast and you can see here all the archives from the recent years and quite far back into the past as well. So even though podcast only began to be used as a term fairly recently in the last maybe 10 years, um, it's been extended to much older radio programs such as Desert Island Discs. So how can podcasts help you with your English? Well, I really think, of course, it's the listening that can improve your comprehension and you'll find examples of all these podcasts on their own websites with the archive so that you can select an episode that you're particularly interested in. Then, of course, sometimes there's also the video equivalent, again, with the same archives here. Uh, you might find that the video with the subtitles is easier to understand at first or you may find that it's a distraction to have the video and you just prefer to do the listening. In any case, by listening or watching the video, the idea is that you get used to listening to natural conversation um, the examples that I've presented today, I think people, the presenters, Fern Cotton, Adam Buxton, uh, Louis Threw, for example, are all fairly clear, articulate speakers. You may have a bit of difficulty understanding Russell Brand, who speaks very quickly, uh, but I think that's a good challenge as well. And of course, all of the guests uh, are going to have different accents, they're from different regions, different countries, so it also helps you adjust to different types of pronunciation. So how can podcasts help your general vocabulary? I've got a few examples just that I've picked out from 
the podcasts I've shown you here. Showing interest in somebody, the interviewers are going to ask lots of questions. So there are lots of little expressions like Fern Cotton said, I'm really interested in hearing your angle on it. There's a subject that um, I think we can, we can both talk about quite well. I'm really interested to hear your angle on it. And that... Then there's a great deal of informal language being used, such as the expression, I was sort of bumping heads quite a lot with my parents. That whole process for me was difficult because I was sort of bumping heads quite a lot with my parents. And so... As I mentioned before, there's also a lot of technical language and expressions that we use when we're working online. I'm now trying to get Sindhu up on Instagram Live. Some of them sound like questions. It should now say that the Guilty Feminist is live. I haven't seen a request, but let's see. Cindy's got headphones in, but she can't hear me. I'm not sure why. She can't hear me at all. Exciting. Yes. So, um, it should now say that the Guilty Feminist is live. You can't hear me. Okay, Cindy's got headphones in and she can't hear me. Uh, I'm not sure why. She can't hear me at all. Um, oh, I can hear you now. Every Yay! Some of the grammar points you may come across while listening are connected to the verbs and question forms. There are many direct questions. For example, when do you think you first became aware? Indirect questions. Do you know who I had my very first Skype conversation with? And tag questions. You chased UFOs together, didn't you? How you do it. So when, when do you think you first became aware that you perhaps had had the propensity to to do such a thing the, do you know who i had my very first ever skype conversation with the first time i ever had like a video conversation with anyone you chased ufos together didn't you yeah and um, because of the connections with the present the conversation is in the present there will be verbs used in the present perfect for example because I've done radio for so long, as well as the present continuous. I'm speaking from a farm track in East Anglia, UK. I love it, but I struggle with it because I've done radio for so long. I'm speaking from a farm track in East Anglia, UK. In the middle of Thank you for listening to this first English video all about podcasts. Here's a list of all the links to the podcasts that I've mentioned and presented today. Hope you find them interesting if you want to listen to some of them. And here's another interesting website, OxfordLearnersDictionaries.com. If you search for podcast, then you'll find the definition. And in the collocation section, Lots of useful expressions connected to the internet, working online, connecting, using the internet, etc. And more examples of the portmanteau words. Thank you very much. See you next time.